thank you everybody for coming to the session. I hope you are get something out of it and enjoy it just a little bit. The title of the session is I'm a paraprofessional girl or guy in a professional world. Um, this is a little bit about my personal story and how you can encourage yourself and others. We do have some objectives here. Um, can you advance without a master's degree in library science? Um, where is it you want to go? How can you get there? And what resources are available to help you reach your goals? <clears throat> Let me start with sharing my story a little bit for you. Um, I started as a circulation clerk at the library at Hall County, and I moved up to be circulation manager. Uh, as a circulation manager, I felt like I could do so much more if I only had the skills to do it. Uh, or the, not the skills necessarily, sorry about that, but the, 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 um, I just had a blank mind here, I'm sorry. Not the skills to do it, but if I had the equipment to do it, if I could get into the software like I needed to, I felt like I could do more and help people more. So I decided I wanted to work for Pines. I didn't have a library degree. I didn't have any degree. So I thought, well, I don't know if that's possible. I don't know if I can work for, work for a company like that. Um, or organization like that without a degree. I went and talked to one of the assistant state librarians and I told her that I wanted to work for Pines, but that I did not have a degree. And she told me that not everybody that worked for GPLS had degrees and that there were often positions available um, that I could apply for just to watch the job board and see what comes up. So I did. I watched the job the job board, and finally I saw a help desk position for Pines, and I applied for it. Pardon me, Don. Do you mind putting your um your uh, presentation into presentation mode for us? Perfect, thank you. Sorry for the interruption. Okay, that's all right. I'm sorry. Let me, let me just, uh... okay. All right, so <clears throat> I applied for the um, help desk manager's position and I got it. And I quickly found out that I could go to college and that GPLS um, supported that and also helped pay for it. That was a wonderful benefit for me and I jumped right on it. So at that point, I began getting my college degree and was able to get an associate's degree in library science. So that, that's my story. You have to know what is it you want. Don't be afraid to go get what you want. That's, that's one of the things I'm gonna tell you. Don't be afraid to go get what you want or at least to ask for what you want. Um, I also, um, a couple of years ago, went to a circulation conference up in, um, up in the northern part of the country, and uh, I met a lady, and her name was Maria Rodriguez, and um, Maria, um, I thought she was, had an MLS and was somebody um, who had a very high position, um, and I got to talking with her, and she worked for MIT. Um, in Boston, and she's an access service, services manager, and she did not have a college degree either. And I thought to myself, wow, she didn't have a college degree and she works for MIT? I mean, that just blew my mind. I thought everybody at MIT had a college degree. Um, 
So it's possible if you don't have a degree in library science or even a degree at all, there are ways that you can improve your skills and get it, get what you want out of your life, out of your job, for your career. Um, and let's face it, we spend eight hours a day at our job. So a lot of times that is our life. And if you're not happy in your job, then you're not a happy person. So we need to be happy. We need to like what we do and be happy. Okay. <clears throat> so what is it that you want to do? Where do you want to go? There's all kinds of library services out there. Um, as you can see here, there's public libraries, school libraries, academic libraries, special libraries. There are just libraries in pretty much any industry you go in. Um, there's research assistance and that kind of thing. Um, so there's plenty of places that you can go and get library positions if that's what you want to do. If you want to do something else besides be a librarian, that's okay too. There are ways to go there. Sorry, Dorcas, I'm going to have to fix my camera now. Hold on one second. Don, we can hear you just fine. So can as long see? as you can see your screen, we can see your screen. Okay. And move through, we can move through. All right, then. Well, I'll just keep going. <clears throat> okay, so. Okay. Now then, maybe that beeping noise will stop now. Okay, <clears throat> so what is it you want to do? You have to think about what you want to do in your life. Find out what makes you happy. If being a photographer makes you happy, then figure out what it is that you can do to earn money and be a photographer. If doing research makes you happy, find the job that you can do research in, whether it's in a library or in an organization, and make yourself happy. Figure it out. What is it you want? And then you can start looking at how do you get there? Everybody has their own strengths and weaknesses, and it's only when you accept everything that you are and that you aren't that you can be successful. A lot of times it's hard for us to think about what we're not good at, and some people have a hard time thinking about what am I good at. They feel awkward bragging on themselves or talking good about themselves but you have to know what your strengths and weaknesses are. If it feels uncomfortable, like you're bragging, consider framing it in a way that, that someone else has said about you. For instance, I could say, Taryn says that I'm really good at running reports and that she can trust me to run the report she asked for because she knows I'll do it correctly. So think about it that way. You don't feel like you're bragging on yourself, but you're repeating what somebody else has already said about you. One time, long ago, long, long ago, um, one of my first accounting jobs that I worked at years ago, I went into an organization to do an interview for an accounts uh, payable position. And I had never worked in accounts payable. I had only done payroll. But right before I left the office of the interviewer, I turned around and I don't know what made me do this, but I did it. I turned around and I looked at her and said, if you want somebody to do this your way, then I'm your person because I don't know any other way to do it. You'll have to train me. That got me my job. She said that comment is what got me the job because she did want someone to do it her way and not just come in there with my own ideas of what accounts payable was and, and do it. So that got me my job. So think of things that you want and how you can get them. And don't think you're bragging about yourself. 
And like I said, I don't know what made that phrase come out of my mouth that day, but it did. <clears throat> but what are you good at? Think of the things. What are you good at? Um, I like to sew, and I think I'm pretty good at sewing. That's one of my hobbies that I think I'm, I'm good at. Um, what are you not good at? What, what is it that you think you could do better, that you could learn more about and do better? We all have something we could do better. Everybody does. Um, one of the thoughts that I have, or one of the things that I have that I can do better, is I can um, think more about my tone of voice when I'm talking. Sometimes it comes across as I'm talking down to people instead of talking to them. And that's, that's one of my faults. And I work hard to, to try to correct that. So think of things that you can do better that will help you, help you to get where you want. And you know, that's one of the questions that you're always asked in an interview. What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? And when you're asked that questions, a lot of time you sit there and go, um, um, because you kind of, even though you know that's the question they're gonna ask, it catches you off guard. Have that answer ready. Go ahead and think about it now. What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? If you're going to be a professional, you need to act and look the part. And what do I mean by that? You need to present yourself as a professional when you're in the office. Um, sometimes even when you're not in the office. If you're in a setting where there are other professionals and if you're uh, in your field or even not in your field, you wanna present yourself as a professional if you wanna be treated like a professional. Let's start with how do you look like a professional? You have to dress the part. Casual Friday means jeans and sometimes tennis shoes and a, just a pullover shirt. It doesn't mean pajamas. <laughs> it doesn't mean that casual. So think about how you dress when you go into the office or go into your library. If you wanna be seen as a professional, then dress like one. Put on nice slacks, a nice blouse or shirt, button down shirt, a shirt with a collar for men. You don't always have to wear a tie if you're a man. You don't have to wear high heels if you're a woman. You can be professional without these little things. But take a look at yourself in the mirror and say, would I hire that person? Think about it. Okay. All right. Your posture. Think about your posture. What does your posture say about you? If you got your shoulders down and, and forward facing and the weight, um, you, want, you want to have the weight on the balls of your feet, hold your shoulders back, lift your chin up, lift it up. If you're all folded over and folded in, you look depressed. You look like, oh no, somebody's going to see me. You need to be positive, have a positive showing. So to be positive, hold your shoulders up, hold your chin up, sit up straight, smile when you see other people. Even if you don't feel like smiling, smile. Greet other people as you pass them in the, in the hallway or in the library. Take time to do those things and to show your positivity. Don't be negative, don't, don't be folded in on yourself, don't be looking at the floor all the time. Um, we all are going to pass a person and not speak to them because we have something else on our mind, and that's okay. But for the most part, try to be aware and speak to other people as you walk by them. Okay. This is a lady. Her name is Amy Cuddy, and I listened to one of her TED Talks. Um, the, the talk I listened to is I think the second most popular TED talk that's out there. And she said, 
Our bodies change our minds, our minds change our behavior, and our behavior can change our outcomes. Uh, the link to the TED Talk is, is below her picture there. You can see it. She was so inspiring. And all she talks about is how to be positive and look at your body language and what you're saying to other people with your body language. Um, I really enjoyed this TED Talk. I mean, I'm not a, not a person to sit down and listen to podcasts and those kinds of things very often. But I did with her. I sat down and listened to this entire TED Talk. It's not that long. Um, if you have a chance, take a look at it. She has a lot of really good things to say. Her background, um, she, she goes into her background about how people kept telling her, you're not supposed to be here. You'll never do that. You'll never be able to do that. Um, and she did. She proved them wrong. And she did. So if you get a chance, listen to her TED Talk. So what does your body language say about you? <clears throat> Look at the people in the top row up here on this, on this slide. These people are open. Their body language is open. Uh, you feel like you could, could come up to them and speak to them. They look welcoming. They look inviting. Um, they're not all closed up and humped over. The people on the bottom row, you wouldn't feel anywhere near as comfortable walking up to that person as you would the person on the top row. And they're the same people. They're just sitting in separate, different positions. So think about that a little bit. Or well, some of them are the same. I thought they were all the same, but there's a couple of them that are different. But anyway, your body language says a lot about you. If you're sitting there with your arms crossed, over in front of you, sometimes that signals that you're angry or you're upset. So think about how your body, what your body language does say about you and how you feel about yourself. I'm gonna pause right here and see, Lauren, do we have any questions I need to get to? Yes, we had someone ask, where did you get an associate's degree in library science? Okay, I got mine at the Georgia State um, University. It used to be Perimeter College. Unfortunately, they do not have an associate's program any longer. But if you'll do a Google search for associates uh, program for library science or information in library science, I believe is the way it's listed at most libraries, um, I, you'll probably find one. There are still a few library, I mean, colleges out there that do, do have them. Was there another question, Lauren? Um, someone asked about what is Pines? And so I did answer that in the chat that it's your uh, shared uh, catalog, your library consortium in Georgia. That was the only other um, okay. question that we had. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank someone you. did say what job board when you were talking about looking for jobs, they said, what job board did you look? To? Okay. Uh, the Georgia Public Library Service um, on their website, they have a listings of jobs. And I think pretty much any state library system would have a, a job listing. And basically any libraries can send a job into um, the Georgia Public Library Service and ask that it be posted on the job board and they will post it. Um, most of the time, these are libraries in Georgia. Occasionally we do have um, postings from South Carolina or Florida, a neighboring state. Um, that might be possible for somebody you know lives in Georgia to work in in the neighboring state, but I believe all um, state library systems have a website and would have a job posting board on it. So that's a good place to look for jobs um, in libraries, and I'm going to cover um, some other places in just a little bit about where you can find jobs. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> well let's move on a little bit. You get in life what you have the courage to ask for. And that's a, um, one of Oprah Winfrey's quotes. And like I said, 
I went and asked for my job. I went and said, I want to work for GPLS and Pines. How can I do this? So you get in life what you have the courage to ask for. And think about it. What's the worst anybody can say? No, that's the worst. So what does it hurt to ask? Go ahead and ask. And even when you're told no sometimes, you can prove them wrong. Go back and listen to, listen to Amy Cuddy's TED Talk. Okay. <clears throat> I've listed here a couple of um, places and uh, job, job postings that I'm going to show you. Um, and these jobs, when you read them, you might think they're asking for a professional person. And when I say professional, I mean somebody with a, a master's degree in library science, because I think we're all professionals. Um, the Georgia Statewide Program Coordinator. Let me pull this job up where you can see it. Lauren, can y'all see that or is it still on the other screen? It's still on your presentation. Okay, hold on one second. Oh, thank you for putting it on there, um, Lauren, or whoever did put the link on there. Let's see if I could share. Um, there we go. Okay. Now, do y'all see the Georgia Public Library page? Yes. Okay. This is this is our job board, basically. Um, this is the Georgia Public Library Service, and over here it says jobs. This one is for a South Carolina statewide program coordinator. And this position is looking for somebody um, to do their outreach, it looks like. Coordinate educational programs, special events, um, need-based services, different things. They report to the deputy director, and it gives you all of their duties, what they what they will do. And as you scroll on down, it says minimum requirements, a high school diploma and relevant program experience. And then it says a bachelor's or master's degree in library science is preferred, but notice that it's not required. If you feel like you could do this job and it's in your area or you'd be willing to move there, apply for it. Three to five years relevant experience with at least two years in project management or co event coordination. Now, does that mean event coordination in libraries? Not necessarily. It says preferably, but not necessarily. If you have done event coordinating, um, <clears throat> if you've done wedding planning for three years, that's event coordinating. If you've done, um, um, if you've coordinated events for um, the business that you work for, maybe they um, are a nonprofit that does fundraising and you've coordinated those events, that's coordination of events. Project management, if you've managed projects and successfully completed them, doesn't say that you need a project management certificate or degree, it just says you need that experience. So think about those things and go ahead and apply for them. And when you're when you're looking at your experience, think about the little things. Think about the, the things that you've done in your past that most of you are probably much younger than I am. So um, if you worked in the library at your college while you were going to school, that's library experience. That wasn't just a college job, that's library experience. So think about the little things that you can add that you can that you can put up down as experience that you've done. These are life experiences and that you can apply them to the job that you want. So that's one thing I wanted to show you on that one. Now I'm gonna be flipping back and forth between screens in just a minute. Look at the salary range here. It starts at $33,494 and goes up to $45,000. That's a pretty good paycheck. 
especially if you're just starting out. Um, if you're young, that's a good paycheck. There's a lot of people that are my age that that's a good paycheck for. So, um, you know, it's not chump change. It's, it's a good paycheck. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have used that slang like that, but you understand what I mean. All right, I'm gonna stop sharing this screen and I am going to go back over here. Whoops, sorry, that wasn't the one I wanted. Ah, cancel. Yes, I guess it was the one I wanted. It just wasn't on the right page. All right. I'm sorry, y'all. I've gotten myself all out of whack here. Let me get back to what I want. Here we go. Cancel that. Okay. Am I back to my presentation? Yes. Great. Thank you, Lauren. All right. This is an IT operations manager. Anytime you see the word manager, you think, um, well, that must, that must be um, a job that you, need, that you would need a degree for. Let's see, is this, yep, yeah, this is the IT operations manager one. Here we go. Okay, again, this one is on the Georgia Public Library Service webpage. And, oh, the listing has expired. My apologies, I did this last week. So that one has expired. Let me go back. And I'm going to pick a library. The next one is library specialist. Ah. We're seeing that one. You seeing the library specialist page? Yes. Okay. All right. Perfect. All right. You can see the salary range here. It starts about the same as the other one did, but it goes up to $53,283. Says applications are no longer accepted. I promise I did this. Well, maybe it was two weeks ago. Maybe that's why they've all been been done. It, these are examples anyway. Okay. So let's see here. The purpose of this classification is to manage the circulation desk, perform routine clerical functions and customer service work in support of library operations and services. When you scroll down. Your minimum requirements again. This one says an associate's degree in library science or a related field, two years experience in library services, education or customer service or a related field, preferably to include lead or supervisory experiences or any equivalent combination of education, training and experience, which provides the re requisite knowledge and skills and abilities for this job. So this one does not require a degree. They prefer it, but it doesn't require it. If you have the skills, the knowledge, and the experience or the training to do this job, apply for it. Don't, don't sit back and go, well, I'm not good enough for that. I don't have those qualifications. You have more than you think you have. Sit back and think about your qualifications. List your positives, list your skills, and think about the things that you actually do have, and you probably do have the things you need to qualify for this. And this one's in DeKalb County. Okay, I'm gonna to try to get back over here to the librarian position. This one was in Ohio. And that's asking you for an email address. I'll, okay, let me just see.
Well, this is ZipRecruiter, recruiter, and I don't want to actually upload my resume. I wanted to show you the job. It's not going to let me, though. Okay. Assistant Library Director. Here we go. Let's do this one. It's in Iowa. An assistant library director, you would think, would require a degree. But there are smaller library systems out there that do not require degrees for assistant positions. Um, uh, I was looking right here for the minimum, minimum qualifications. Let me just click here. Okay, these are different employment opportunities. Here's the library director. <laughs> Tells you how to apply. And there's some more uh, library directors. Suggested minimum, minimum qualifications is a state library certif certification at level three or above, 10 years library experience, or 60 semesters of college credit from accredited college or university at any course of study, completion of management one and two, high school diploma or GED. So it doesn't say that you have to have that college degree. It would like for you to have some college. It would like you for you to have a certification. If you feel like you're qualified, apply for it. Again, apply for it. The least, the most they can do is say no. That's the thing. If, if you're not qualified, they can just pass over your resume and application and move on. It doesn't hurt to get your name out there though. If you apply for that job and you're not qualified, then maybe this job right here, the children's librarian, you would be qualified for. And even though you didn't apply for that job because you didn't realize it was open or available, um, you could, they could say, you know what? I looked at that resume for Dawn Dale and I think, I think she might could do this job. Let's look at her for this job. Or if you apply for both of them, they might say, you know, I saw her name um, in the in the assistant library director's job, let's look at her application. So having your name out there doesn't hurt. Um, so if you think you're qualified, apply for it. Okay, we're going to look at a couple, just a couple more here. I'm sorry, y'all. I keep scrolling through this, and I don't mean to. This is a librarian position. It's on LinkedIn, and it's no longer accepting applications. But let's see if we can see the description. This is in St. Louis. It serves um, parts of Missouri, Louisiana, I'm sorry, Missouri, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, and Arkansas. So they serve a, a large area. It tells you what their um, what the overview of the job is, what the responsibilities are and the qualifications. This one asks for a master's degree in library science or commensurate experience. Now, somebody who has a master's degree, um, you would think would have a great deal of experience, and that's true. Um, but you also might have that experience. You might have enough experience um, you've, maybe you've been in a library, maybe you've been a branch manager for um, 10 years um, in a smaller system that you had to report to the board for your area and you had to prepare budgets for your area and for your library. You might have the qualifications that are needed for this job. So make sure you read through it and look at it. And if you think that you are, can do the job, if you think you're good enough, apply for it. If you think you've got what it takes, apply for it. Again, the worst thing they can do is say no. 
Now, if it said a master's degree in library science is required, no exceptions, then, then don't, don't apply if you don't have that degree. They've put that in there for a reason. So don't apply if you don't have that degree. But when it leaves the door open and says commensurate experience or however they word it, then, then you're, you're welcome to apply for that job. They've, let, they've opened that door for a reason. So walk through it if, you, if you're ready to, walk through it. Okay, I'm not gonna look at any more actual job because we're getting a little bit short on time here. So let me go back to my presentation and share my, get back to my, uh, Okay, am I back to my presentation, Lauren? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, <clears throat> here is a number of um, different places that you can apply that have listings for jobs. You're familiar with most of them. You've probably seen them on TV. Probably one of the newer ones is ZipRecruiter. LinkedIn is a very good, if you're not a member of LinkedIn, become a member of LinkedIn. It comes across almost as a social network, but it has a great deal of um, business done on, or, you know, there is, it's for business, a social network for businesses, for people hiring and, and applying for jobs. And also look up roberthalf.com. He does a blog and also has um, listings for hire, you know, job postings. He has a lot of good tips on his website. So go ahead and look, look that one up too. That's one I was not familiar with. Okay. You applied for the job, are you ready for the interview? And I'm gonna go through this kind of quickly because I wanna leave time for a few questions. Prepare for your interview. Research the business or the place you're gonna work. Practice answering the common questions. What are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Have somebody listen to you. Have somebody help you. Ask your roommate, your husband, your sister, your brother, what are my weaknesses? I bet they can tell you. Know what position you're applying for and what the qualifications are. I'll never forget, um, we had a lady apply for an acquisitions position with Georgia Public Library Service. And at the end of the interview, we asked her if she had any questions and she said, well, really just one, what exactly is acquisitions? She didn't even know what she was applying for. So you wanna know that, know what you're applying for. Practice selling yourself. That's what a job interview is. You're trying to sell yourself. Know the salary range you want to earn or what is, is available in that position. Have your questions ready to ask. Know what questions not to ask. And then go to, um, let's see, this, this bar is in my way, <clears throat> roberthalf.com and look for the articles that he has with many of these tips. Okay, here is my email address. Feel free to email me with any questions you have or if I can help you in any way. I'll be happy to proofread your resume. I'll be happy to help you um, come up with the questions that maybe you want to ask the, the person that's interviewing you if you do apply for a job. Um, if you want to know more about how to ask for what you want, how to go out there and get what you want, I'll be glad to try to help you find what you need to do to, to do that. So feel free to contact me and let me know if there's any way I can help you at all. Um, and Lauren, do we have any more questions? We or don't uh, We don't have any at the moment. I actually do have one though. Okay. Um, a lot of times when I'm looking, when I was first getting started in libraries before I had a degree, it was hard for me because I felt like I just didn't have the requisite skills, you know, I would read the job postings and I would always be kind of, you know, uh, I would feel it was hard for me to 
to look at those and think like, well, I actually do, you know, even though I haven't worked in a library or I've only been a shelver in a library, it was hard for me to, you know, sort of go through that and feel like I could, you know, I had skills in those areas. And so do you think mm -hmm. that, you know, I was thinking about things that people do that, you know, project management, things like that. Like, let's say you run or you organize like your church's Bible school program or uh -huh. things like that. Are those things that people should include when they're, you know, if they don't have direct experience, is that the type of life experience you think they should include? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. That is, that is a very good example, Lauren. Anything that you, um, that you have organized like that, um, you know, it, church activities are, are really good ones to, to pull back on and because if you're really involved in your church, I'm sure there is something that you organize um, or did. If you're applying for a children's position and you taught a Sunday school class and you um, read stories to children, you know, the Bible stories or whatever, then you've done storytelling. Um, give yourself credit for what you have actually done and know that those skills, they might come natural to you. They might be second nature to you. So you might not think that that was something that you accomplished, but you did. Um, just because it came natural to you does not mean that it wasn't something that, um, that you can't pull from. You can. All of those types of things, um, and ask somebody else too, Lauren. If you if you feel like um, you're you're looking at the qualifications and you're not sure if if you can include something, ask somebody else. Do you think teaching a Sunday school class qualifies as storytelling? I mean, would that would that fit in there? I mean, I've been teaching six year olds for three years now, and we do stories every Sunday. Get get another opinion, and. Always remember to be positive, have a positive outlook. So be positive about yourself and be positive about the things that you have done and try not to look at the negative of it. But yeah, that's a very good example, Lauren. <clears throat> have we had anything else come in? We have not. We've had some people share some, uh, they've shared some resources um, I've linked to uh, Robert Half that you talked about. I've tried to link everything um, okay. to that there. But um, does anybody have any other questions? We'll give you a few seconds to type that in. And um, we have 15 minutes left. So. Oh, okay. I thought I was supposed to be finished at 345. I apologize. You're good. No, you're good. That's okay. <laughs> If there's something you want me to go back over, I'll be glad to, um, since I kind of hurried through the end of it. So Heather asked, what is a good length for a resume? If you can get it all on one page, that's better. I wouldn't do more than two pages if I could help it. Uh, one page is good, uh, but two pages at the most. Um, when you think about if you were doing the hiring for that position and you had 50 resumes in front of you, you would like to look through one page of each instead of two pages of each or three pages of each or whatever. So think of it in that light. Yes, ma'am, that MLS from 30 years ago counts. <laughs> um, that, was, that question was from Kathy Miller. Kathy said, I have an MLS from 30 years ago. Does that count? Yes, ma'am, it does. Um, you might need to update your certification or get recertified with the state, um, but I'm not sure what you have to do for that um, since I am not certified myself. But we, <clears throat> excuse me, but we can find the answer if we need to. Lydia asked, do you think it's good or bad to include relevant coursework on your resume? A lot of uh, their interests haven't been able uh, they haven't been able to do practically at work, but they've taken graduate level courses about them. Yes, I think so. Um, if you have done a research project in your coursework that, you know, was an extensive research project and you can use that to sell yourself, then by all means use it. Yeah. 
Don, I'm interested to know what your approach is. Like when you are, you, when you're looking at these job ads, do you have a way that you approach, you know, sort of like, you know, you're going to apply for it and they're asking for all of these different things. Do you break them up and, and write everything out? Like, you know, if they're asking for project management experience and you go through, do you write out all the things that you think you've done that are under that area? Like, how do you approach you know, these job ads and preparing to either apply or even using the job ad to prepare for the interview? How do you do that? Um, I would use the job ad to prepare for the interview, certainly. In applying, I would make sure that I've included that I do have um, the experiences that they've asked for. I would make sure that they are on my resume, not in detail, you know, but um, certainly make sure that I have put in there, yes, I have research experience, or yes, I have project management experience. And, you know, you can put the time frame that you did that experience or whatever. Um, I would make sure that I do have them on my resume. And in preparing for my interview, I would look over them and make, my, make some notes for myself. Um, what projects have I managed? You know, have them go ahead and go over them in your mind so that when they ask you for those questions, you have an answer ready for them and you don't have to sit there and think about it and say, mm, well, you know, um, I think it was two, maybe, maybe four years ago. You don't want to hesitate like that. Have the answers ready in your mind so that you can just answer the questions. And, um, don't think that what you're, you know, doing, um, your project management was um, coordinating and, and, and running vacation Bible school for your church. Um, don't think that it, they're going to say, well, that's not a project management. Yes, it is. Um, and if they don't think so, then that's okay. But it is a project management. So go ahead and use it. But have the answer ready in your mind. Adriana asks, is it more difficult to be able to get jobs in one type of library as opposed to other types? And so they say, say law libraries to academic or public libraries in terms of requirements that are asked for. Well, I think that depends on your qualifications. Um, if you are familiar with um, a law library or if you have done maybe some work as a um, court clerk or you're familiar with the legal system somewhat, you might be more suited to a law library than you would be a public library or um, a different library. Someone who has um, a lot of music experience with either playing musical instruments or being involved in music somehow um, would certainly be a good fit for a music library um, as opposed to a law library. So I think it really depends on your qualifications uh, as to what, what area you would fit in. For instance, myself, I felt more qualified for a public library than I would for a college library because I didn't have the college degree that those students that I would be helping are pursuing. So I wouldn't, I felt like I was more qualified for the public setting because I feel more qualified to work with um, children and, you know, help with day-to-day -day things that everybody needs, not just somebody pursuing a degree. Um, on Robert Half, um, one of the things that he goes into on one of his blogs is um, at the end of every interview, they ask you, um, do you have any questions for us? And there are some really good questions that he has on there um, that, that I think that would be good. One of them is, can you tell me a little bit about the um, culture of your organization? Um, you know, how, how, how is it, is it a diverse culture? Um, 
for let's just take Chick-fil-A, for example, because we know that Chick-fil-A is a Christian organization. Um, that doesn't mean you have to be a Christian to work there, but they do have a certain culture that they expect you to adhere to. <clears throat> so um, you can ask that question. You can ask, um, when they ask you what salary range you're looking for, you can always answer it in, well, um, I'm not really ready to discuss what, what salary I'd be willing to accept, but can you tell me maybe what range is available for this, for this position or what, what range you're looking to pay? Um, Robert half words it a little bit better than I have. Um, he also, there's several other really good questions on there. Um, you can ask, you can ask the interviewer, um, how long have you been with the company? Can you tell me about your experience with this company or with this organization? Um, <clears throat> so it gives you some good questions to let the interviewer know that you've prepared for that interview and you're not sitting there fumbling for, for questions and answers. My biggest thing to tell you is don't sell yourself short. Make sure that you own who you are and own your strengths and own your weaknesses. And be ready to, to stand up and say, this is who I am. Recently, and this just came to my mind, recently, um, Georgia Public Library Service went through an um, I don't know what you call it. It was a, not necessarily an audit, but they went through every job position. They had a, a company come in and went through all of our job positions and what we do. And they interviewed basically all of us and said, um, why do you feel like you're necessary? Your, your position's necessary. Um, what is it that, that you have that makes you good at what you do kind of thing. And after this audit, they basically said, okay, we have two people doing the same thing and you only need one person or um, in, in a couple of cases, they said, well, you really need somebody to do this and you don't have anybody doing this. Well, in that whole process, my boss came to me and she said, um, Dawn, I need you to sell yourself. I need you to own what you're good at. And you're good at working with the libraries because you used to work in the library and you know, you know what they're doing. You know how they have to handle things every day and you need to own that and you need to sell it. Don't be shy. So don't be shy. When it comes to getting what you want out of life, getting the job that you want or the career that you want, don't be shy and don't sell yourself short. Don't be afraid to go get it. You are gonna get turned down, maybe once, maybe twice, I don't know, I've, I've been turned down before, and that's not a real good feeling, but you have to tell yourself, well, that's their loss, not mine, and go on for another, look, look for something else. Or if that's really the position you want, then, Find out why you didn't get that job and figure out what it is you need to improve so that you can get that job. Thank you so much, Dawn. This was a wonderful presentation and we're so glad that you could um, be with us today. And I also wanna thank everyone for attending the webinar. Um, if you all have any other questions, please don't hesitate to contact Dawn. Her information is here on the screen, or you can contact any of the state library um, continuing education coordinators. So once you leave today's webinar, you will receive a survey on the presentation, and we would appreciate it if you would complete that with your feedback. And thanks again, and please be sure to join us tomorrow. Um, for more sessions, day one down. See you tomorrow, everybody. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Don.